A few days ago I was in Seacliff State Beach, a state park in California, and I was parking at the upper level of the day use area and I noticed they had several electric vehicle parking spaces they recently installed and I was curious about the possibility of using this to charge my auxiliary RV batteries on in times like this in the winter when there's lots of cloud cover and I'm having trouble getting good solar charging during the day and the Sun is also not going much above my head straight up in the air but rather towards the horizon so I was looking at the charging capability of these I looked at the plug and on the end of the plug it said 120 slash 240 volts and then I consulted with a company in Tucson, Arizona. Here's their website. After many, many emails and confusion, they finally directed me towards their product down here, designed originally for a motorcycle, the zero, I guess a zero brand motorcycle, zero designating zero emissions. And so this would be the plug with a pigtail he was offering to customize for me any pigtail I want. And what I learned is, although the plug has more than three wires, several of the wires are just going to be connected to circuitry to trick the EV charging station into thinking that I'm an EV vehicle. And here are some of the, here are all the emails so far quite a lot of them you can pause any of that if you want to read it at a few times he was uh, most of the time he was just really down to business he's not that personal at least not yet very personable just really strictly down to business sell the product answer critical questions as needed. Here's a map of the EV charging stations throughout the United States. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more than this. This is just one company um, showing the ones they know of. And the privilege of this would be to be able to park in these spaces that are designed for EVs. Although my vehicle is not an electric vehicle, in the strict sense of running on electricity only rather than fuel I will still be able to park here because they can't much prove once I pull up there's not going to be someone there waiting to make sure they don't hear a, a fuel engine so anyway uh, this um, motorhome I have I custom built is going to be as far as I can tell the first RV or motorhome of any type that will be equipped to plug into an EV charging station. I believe Mercedes-Benz is working on a electric motorhome, but they haven't released it. They're not anywhere near releasing it. They just have a prototype. Uh, and there are there are actually electric vans out there even in the United States they're apparently extremely rare they are there but this will be the first one with a sophisticated electronic power system that will be designed for RV and living use and the vehicle pretty much needs to be this size or smaller because these EV parking spaces are not that big you're not going to be able to get a Class C, and of course not a Class A motorhome in these kind of charging stations. So it's going to be restricted to something like this or smaller. This one is 20.5 feet long, including the boxes on the back. Here's my 30 amp inlet that I installed. 
and this is what I'm thinking about having converted into the EV charge inlet. Currently this is just a exhaust fan that's no longer being used and all my power things my power station is located right here where I have the cursor this area here the battery and everything like that um, so one of my concerns is sometimes the cord at the EV charging station may only reach maybe up to here I think most of them are going to reach all the way up to here if I pull in if not I can back in so no big deal this is already a historic innovative RV camper van build in many ways so this will be one added way this as far as I can tell I've done lots of internet research called or written many um, companies that are selling the J1772 that's what that's called the charging port that I will put in there and this will be the first RV to ever have one of those some of the benefits of having it will be I will no longer need to drive in order to charge my batteries when the solar is insufficient and I need charged because I don't have a generator and so when I run out of power I need to run this expensive diesel engine if I can pull up into ever increasing EV stations that could solve a lot of um, problems I have with getting charged up. Also the benefit of charging at an EV station is it will allow my battery system to my batteries to be topped off and they will last longer that way with less threat of being discharged beyond 11 volts. As far as my research determines if a battery is discharged beyond 11 volts if it's an AGM battery then it will um, degrade and lose some of its longevity the reason I still don't have lithium batteries although I did try them is because the complications involved with hooking it up so that when I drive the vehicle or let it idle it will charge my lithium batteries from the alternator. Currently that's pretty difficult to do with lithium. So I'm really looking forward to parking places where they have all these signs like this. I think I'm going to be able to get away with it. It's going to uh, probably attract a tremendous amount of attention to my vehicle. I'm not going to, I don't mean to mislead people into thinking now there are EV RVs out there there currently aren't now one thing I have to get in addition to the inlet the J1772 inlet is going to be a converter transformer because I have to convert from 240 volts down to 120 volts and I won't go into all the details why but basically the charging systems on the electric vehicles are 240 volts uh, today but my vehicle is 120 volts my RV system so I need to go down I need to step down from 240 to 120 and as far as I can tell this is the best one on the market I bought mine I just ordered it from Walmart 169 for some reason they didn't charge tax even though I'm in California I think they were supposed to have but it's free shipping now I wanted to buy it from Walmart in case I don't like it I can easily just go to a store to take it back within probably two weeks or so now the Amazon ratings of this model are pretty bad but they, that's the case with all of these transformers there's something about them um, 20 per, 15 to 20 percent of the users hate them and only half of them really love them so that's this is the 2000 watt version I got the 3000 watt version because if my calculations are correct the 3000 watt will allow 15 amps 
AC without putting too much stress on the box um, to charge my batteries. It would take approximately five to six thousand watt, according to my calculations, to achieve uh, 30 amps service. So that would both charge my batteries and run appliances such as the air conditioner and cooking stove. I don't want to go to that extreme. This should be just fine. Um, on their website, lightfuse.com, they have a video explaining the benefits of this one. One very huge reason why I went ahead and bought this one is because it's completely grounded from input to output for safety reasons and because my battery management system I have installed right here this black box that's my battery management system this is the display for it this is my electrical system by the way and there's my huge AGM 270 amp hour battery okay this thing is fussy it does not like dirty power and it makes sure no dirty power comes in here nothing harmful everything has to be grounded properly from the outside of the vehicle when power is coming in so this will prevent anything that's not grounded properly from coming in the other day I borrowed somebody's generator when my alt when my uh, starter broke on my van and I couldn't run the vehicle to charge my batteries when I was parked in the shade and so it, their generator was a 2000 watt champion and apparently it had an open ground and so this EMS electrical management system totally rejected that generator would not allow me to charge my battery or anything at all and so therefore it's very important I get one that's grounded really well so this won't reject it so the way the the transformer is going to have to be installed here uh, is that it's going to um, I believe it's going to come start at the um, EMS and the back end back here it's going to have to come in back here so I'm going to have to tie into probably either a 15 I have a 15 and a 30 amp service inlet the 15 amp one you didn't see in the previous photo because it's mounted on my back bumper so uh, I can uh, hardwire into that before coming in here and then it's going to go to my breaker box these are two 15 amp breakers and then from there goes to an automatic transfer switch to the AC receptacles here and also many of them not shown in this photo on the right side there my electrical system is very heavily fused the kind of fuses that I like are resettable ones and that's why I was wanting to get the transformer I showed you because instead of fuses that can blow it has a resettable fuse and here this right here is the charger that ultimately I plan on being the prime focus of where the power is going to go to from the EV charging station this charger is a charger converter of course I'm going to make a video after the successful install and operation which hasn't occurred yet that's going to be in about a week or so after this video is made so I just wanted this video to be kind of a historic video because I think this is pretty cool important stuff this is the future where we're going to be plugging our vehicles into EV charging stations um, uh, there are, I believe there are hybrid electric vehicles that have gas uh, and electric systems that plug into EV stations so they're not all 100% electric vehicles that plug into them so that more justifies what I'm doing certainly does now that I think of it so again the, like I say the main purpose of this video is to explain as far as I can tell this is going to be the first vehicle with this kind of RV equipment that's going to be plugging into an EV charging station and it's taking a company like the one I ordered the pigtail 
adapter from in Tucson, Arizona to have circuitry to trick the charging station into believing that I'm in an electric vehicle when I'm really not so that I could charge this battery primarily. When I do a lithium upgrade everything will still be the same pretty much. This is a four stage smart charger compatible with lithium so I could swap that out for lithium and I believe everything's still going to be the same. Okay, I'm going to get going. Uh, like I said, please leave me some feedback. Um, I appreciate it. I enjoy having a conversation with you down in the comments.